Hello and welcome to the Checkpoint Reach podcast. I'm your host Luke Eldon and today I'm joined by Sudden Perks. How are you doing guys? I'm Very good. good. Alright, not bad. Good to hear. Lockdown uh, not got to you yet? Eh. Just uh, <laughs> eh. Not really because it's getting to the point. Mildly just, depressed. Oh, it's just getting to the point where it's like normal now. So, it, just feels normal. it feels like this is what it's going to be like forever, doesn't it? <laughs> oh mate, I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> You know what I mean? You get like after a few weeks, you kind of get just used to it, and it's like, oh, this is how it is. Yeah. It has definitely become the new norm. Yeah, unfortunately so. And uh, you know, wherever you are in the world listening to this, we hope you're safe and well, and you know, not struggling too much with lockdown. Um, but we are here to discuss some gaming news today, and we wanted to jump into the first topic. But before we do, if you're listening to us on YouTube, please like, subscribe and comment with your thoughts on the topics we're going to cover today. And if you're listening to us on any audio platforms, please leave us a nice review and also pass on the pod. But yeah, let's jump into it. It's the uh, PS5 Epic Games Unreal Engine 5 demo. Obviously, this dropped a couple of days ago now, I believe. Um, maybe around Wednesday. I'm not yeah. too sure. Don't hold me to I think to it that. was Wednesday. I think it was. Well, every day yeah. just yeah. seems the same. I know, yeah. Could have been any of this. <laughs> Yeah, but this did drop, and it, it did look pretty cool, to be fair, and a lot of people were pretty hyped from the comments I've seen, um, obviously. Yeah. Very disappointed after the inside Xbox, and then PS5 mm. dropped this this <laughs> week. Yeah, it seems people are definitely favouring PS5 at the moment. Yeah, there was definitely. very much a lot of rip Xbox, yeah. lol Xbox, that. all these <laughs> troll comments going Fun on in, comments. in the comments. Yeah, exactly, but... To be honest, I think we all kind of saw that coming. Yeah, unfortunately. I think after the, uh, well, did we actually not all say after the inside Xbox show? And I bet you any money in the next few days, Sony will show something off. Yeah, I mean, I know it wasn't technically Sony that showed it off, but they clear they clearly have some sort of partnership with Epic, don't they? Marketing partnership. They saw their opportunity and um, they took it, and you can't blame them. For yeah, that. I mean, I think we have to reiterate this engine will clearly be running games on. Series X and PS5, no doubt about that. Yeah. Um, but clearly, Sony have got some sort of, you know, gravitas with Epic at the minute. They've obviously, I think they've been they did they did a lot of bundles with Fortnite, didn't they, with their PS4s? So I'm mm-hmm. wondering if it's they've they've obviously got some sort of like agreement or arrangement to uh, look favorably on them uh, on PlayStation at the minute. Because um, even uh, I don't know if you two saw the comments from uh, I think his name's Tim Sweeney. Who I think yeah. is yeah. I don't know what he is at Epic, CEO. but I know he's. Is it yeah. CEO, right? He was being very because uh, he had a, he had an interview, didn't he? With uh, was it Jeff Keighley? He had an interview with him at the end of the presentation. Yeah, it's like um, that he, festival summer thing. Summer, yeah, summer fest, game fest, yeah, yeah summer, summer game fest, that. I think. Um, and he said, didn't he? Like, oh, things like the PlayStation Five. Uh, this is only possible because of how <laughs> the fast SSD and the PS Five and even high end PCs can't do it. And obviously, didn't really talk about Xbox probably because I'm assuming, well, probably not allowed, maybe, but. Um, he did, however, then go on to say that this, obviously, Unreal Engine 5 will be being used for all platforms, all next-gen platforms. So, And he even said that he wants it to, you know, to be able to use it on current-gen platforms and even phones, I think he said. So, mm. obviously, with a lot of downgrades. Yeah, um, I, I imagine so. But I think people have maybe jumped on the bandwagon a little bit too soon, saying, I've heard comments such as, oh, this proves the PS5 secretly is better than the Xbox, more, you know, technically more powerful, and it's like... I'm not so sure about that. I think uh, clearly, I think we all know by now anyway, we knew anyway that the, the PS5's main draw point is going to be their SSD. I think we already knew that anyway from the Mark Cerny presentation where they were bigging it up. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I think even definitely Phil Spencer, focused on speed. I think I remember even an interview with Phil Spencer where he said, you know, he was asked about the PS5 reveal and he said, like, oh, they're doing interesting things with the SSD, which pretty much equates to they've probably got a better one than us. But, um, <laughs> I'd imagine so. Pretty much. Uh, yeah, so I think it's interesting because a lot of people are saying only next gen that maybe we we've been too quick to presume that the Series X is going to be, you know, this powerhouse and it's going to outperform the PS5 and everything. And people are now saying like, oh well, be careful because SSD this gen seems like it's going to be pretty important. So I don't think we'll get. A, I don't think we'll actually know until we can see both consoles properly. No, until I agree. Pro- we're, the, you know, let's be honest. The PS5 hasn't been revealed yet. How are we supposed to draw any conclusions from that demo when we haven't even seen the box or the machine? Or yeah, we've seen the specs, but until you actually see it running, you can't tell, can you? So 
until we see the Series X, until we actually get our hands on that, until you know we get our hands on the PS5, I don't think we can really make too many presumptions yet. Really, I don't know if you agree with that. I don't. I think people are jumping the gun a little bit too soon for me. On I think that footage that we saw could have easily been running on an Xbox Series X. Mm. Unpopular opinion to all the some people disagree. With that, out I saw some people disagree. Yeah, with that. like I, I, I know it, it is unpopular, yeah. and I've led with that for a reason. But I just think, you know, when we see the the specs, and I, we we have said this a few times in the past, but when you see the specs on paper and then you mm. you see them on the screen, it, it's quite often very different. Just because mm. the PlayStation is faster technically, just because the Xbox is more powerful technically, when you look at numbers. You don't really know that the translation well, of that until mm. you see it side by side. I'm, I, it doesn't sit well with me that Xbox couldn't put that that same demo no. out at, at well, this think, point yeah. in, in what we're building up to the next gen. If they couldn't do that, then I think I'm what a bit some worried. people were saying is that they could obviously put that demo out, but it would just look a little bit different in terms of maybe on the Series X that there'd be more popping with textures and stuff like that. You know, because obviously it's a bit slower. The SSD is a bit slower. So the things would lag a bit more. So I think that's the point people were trying to make. Like maybe you'd see more sort of textures popping in on the Series X one. Uh, whereas on that PS5 one, it looked very smooth, didn't it? it didn't look yeah, like it's it very popping seamless. at all. The textures looked smooth and like there was no hiccups really. So I think that's what people were saying. It would obviously run on a Series X. And, you know, in terms of graphical, it would probably look a bit better on the Series X, but people are saying it would run a bit slower. So it's like, it seems it's like this trade. is going to be... speed versus power. This is going to be... I mean, I think we even said this with the, with the Mark Cine presentation, didn't we? we? I think we said when it was re- they were all healed, it's going to be a generation of speed versus power. Yeah. It 100%. seems to me. And I don't know. I, I, actually, I don't know if you agree. I think it's going to depend game on game, which is better for which, to be honest with you. There might be some games where the SSD does make a big difference and it runs better because of that, but I think there's also going to be games where the extra power of the Series X will make the game look yeah. and feel it's better. It's just like so. uh, anything to do with speed v power, isn't it? Different yeah. matchups and styles yeah, yeah. will suit either or. Um, yeah, I agree. So it'll I be agree. interesting to see with that. Uh, yeah, I, I think as well, though, one thing we should just quickly touch on with the Series X that might go in its favour, there are hmm. rumours or... I guess, yeah, rumours, very small rumours, that it might be $400. Oh, I did see this, yeah. This was this reported a few days ago, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, I did see that rumour. I, I, I can't imagine it. I don't know. It's it's one of them plays where if it actually happens, it's a sort of, oh my God moment, isn't it? Like, wow, that's mm. like £100 cheaper. Like, that is a, that is a big a difference. Now, would it, be a big, would it be a big enough difference to make them like win the generation? No, I don't think so. I don't. I still don't think they'd outsell the PS5. They'd probably gain back their territories in America and UK. Mm-hmm. I think that's probably pretty certain because, as we know, 360, um, the UK and you had a big hold on the UK and US, didn't it, in terms of sales over the PS3? I think that could happen again. But the PS5 would still, I think, it would still probably worldwide. We know it's a bigger brand. We know it sells more in Europe, stuff like Art Japan. So, in terms of that, I don't think it'd be much difference. But I think in terms of narrative and make himself look better for their core audience. Yeah, I think that would be a massive move. Uh, I think it would give PlayStation a headache, definitely. It's even one of those scenarios where I can imagine that sort of happening, where they say, oh, it's £100 cheaper, then immediately, two days later, you know, Sony go, oh, actually, no, sorry, what did we... We said 500 uh, I meant 400 actually. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be one of them, wouldn't it, where you could make imagine... Make adjustments where... Making, yeah, or putting it down by, like, $50 or something, or if they don't, if they can't put it down by 100 or something to soften the blow. I think this is what Microsoft kind of did, didn't they, in the Xbox One reveal days, where they kind of softened the blow by saying, um, oh, well, you know, was it like, we're going to reduce the price a little bit, and, mm. yeah, oh, sorry, DRM, it's not actually DRM anymore, we've changed. And, I mean, so, yeah, their hands were tied on that one. Yeah. They, couldn't, they couldn't have carried on full steam no, no, ahead with that. Definitely I not. think this rumour pretty much goes hand in hand with the fact that no one wants to go first. Yeah, no. Like we've said it. this we've, for some yeah. time. Like we don't know the costs. We know speculative figures and rumors that pop up all over the place, but we we mm. just don't know the costs. People are expecting high end, five hundred dollars, five hundred pound, or around that mark. Mm. And who's going first, man? Because if if Microsoft did go first, and if by miracle they they decided to 
to be incredibly generous and mm. without doubt make a loss if they came in oh, at four hundred dollars. Make a huge loss on each yeah. console. Like Sony would have no choice. Sony couldn't just come to market at five hundred dollars. It, it would have to no, begin with see. a four to at least trick people's maybe. minds. Yeah, yeah. E- even four if it was like nine. four eight. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like they would have <laughs> to do something like that just just because well, like, that that's how well, marketing works. Well, the current in the current rumor mill, and we have to be careful because it is only rumors, but. They're saying the PlayStation reveal is probably going to be in June. So, but, I mean, if, could they possibly reveal a console and then just not say the price? Maybe. Could they get away with it? It's not what it's traditionally done, but maybe they think, oh, we could get away with this. We'll just I think you the could price. if it was followed up like a month later or something yeah. like that. You know, if there was like a mm. show in June and then maybe yeah. one in July or something with with more information and a, and a bit more of a, I think, uh, Microsoft a deeper hoping, dive into it. Microsoft has certainly... I, the, I know they say about, oh, we're doing July because we're not ready yet, but I think there's definitely some tactics going on there. They want to do July because they're thinking we want to wait as long as possible for Sony to actually reveal to make sure that we're second. Because I don't know if you remember that this gen especially, you know with the E3s, um, Microsoft have always gone first and then Sony have always trumped them by yep. going second and doing something bigger and better. So I'm thinking, I think they're thinking it's better to go second this time on this one. Uh I, I, I mean, I, I don't know about you. I wouldn't be shocked if the PS5 was revealed in June. I think it makes sense. We haven't heard any, anything from Sony for a long time now, really. I mean, we saw that deep dive on the PS5, that, you know, fall asleep conference. <laughs> yeah. it, no, that, that, was, that was interesting if you were interested uh, yeah. in specs and, like, but technical jargon, but it's it was not from, like, a console point of yeah. view. No. But apart from that, we've not seen anything. I mean, we've seen this little demo, but it's not, you know, that's from Epic, really. Rather than it's not PS5 showing much. Well, time's so. running out, though, isn't it? Really, they're going to have yeah. to announce it sooner or later. Yeah, I, I think. Mean, so. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, if they want to get it out for November, <laughs> yeah, yeah, they need to announce need to know it. The price needs to start. Need to know the price needs to get. Well, they need to get pre-orders, <laughs> don't they? They want to get their pre-order numbers up, so yeah. they have to start doing it soon. Um, and I guess on the flip they, side, I will say it. It's kind of refreshing that we haven't had everything so far, and we're on. We're all on tenter hooks, and we're like, yeah, what's mm. going on? There's no spoilers as much as there are rumors i mean there's mm. a different rumor every day but i find it quite fun going into the the reveal periods where we're not actually getting that much truly spoilt for us in the traditional run into like e3s you know what's going to no, be true. there and you know what the presentation is before you yeah. even watch it in majority Probably. this we've is a little like, bit different yeah we've seen like people saying like oh i know this and stuff like that but which some of them might come true when you see a list don't you like this is what's going to be revealed and it's like yeah, some of them probably will be true, but it's not hard to guess some of them. So, Well, yeah, I mean, that's but, the nature of throwing yeah, rumours yeah, out there, isn't it? Exactly. You're going to be right, gonna if, you, some if, right if you apply eventually. logic. Yeah, yeah but, um, but... I don't know, man. Like, I'm I'm okay with... If it's if it's June, July for both of them, I'm, I'm quite okay with that. And if we're, if we're in the dark, leading right up to it, and when you actually get hit with that show, that presentation, however they do it, I don't know. I'm, I'm quite down for that. Yeah, I, I agree. I... I uh... I'd, I, mean, I think uh, I think we'd all like to see the PS5 be revealed soon, wouldn't we? We just want to kind of know what it looks like more than anything. I do yeah, anyway. I'm really That's intrigued. I'm really yeah. intrigued. I, I want to see it. Um, obviously, those you know, we saw those um, dev kits that were going around, and I don't think oh, it's going it to look like, like that. that. It can't look like that, surely. I mean, I'm 95 percent so. confident it won't. No. I'll leave the five percent there just in case. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if there's some sort of like V-shaped thing. That they try and put in the middle of the box or something, but it definitely won't. The whole console won't be a V shape. No, like I just, uh, I, I think that'd be awful. The last those li- those little was... toasters were not were not consoles. No, the last thing I remember, no. like having the like you know letter in it or whatever, was obviously the original Xbox. Yeah, the X. With the yeah, X, yeah, with the big X. I used to think well, that, that was quite cool actually. But well, that's massive. what I mean about. That's what I mean about I can imagine them doing something like that where they've got like a V in the middle of the console or something like lit up or you know what I mean? But yeah. I can't imagine it actually being practically like that. I don't, yeah, look, I'm going to imagine it looks <laughs> sleek and nice and yeah, it would fit well so. in a home design. Like it wouldn't be just Although an they, actual V shape. I wouldn't be shocked if they've had to do some sort of like box design as well, like Xbox. Maybe not to the same extent as Xbox, but it might be a more vertical looking console than we used to just because what they're using and the components are pretty similar, let's be honest, in both consoles. Mm. So maybe it'll be like that, but it'll be interesting to see if it'll be black and white as well. Like yeah, is it going to match the controller? Which would yeah, be I mean, interesting. You'd assume so. Maybe. Otherwise, maybe. the controller is going to look really weird. Yeah, it is going to look weird if it's just a you know a black or or just a white console. It's going to look a bit strange. 
Yeah, but, uh, unless they renege on the controller and make it all one color, because I don't think people were too fond of the the color scheme mm. and the way that it was actually put together. Like the dual colors is nice, but not like that. I mean, like, I agree. It has to they, be designed properly. There's no reason why they couldn't just have that dual controller as an optional controller and maybe have the, you know, the normal black one as a as the one you pack into the console. Maybe that'd probably be sensible. Um, if they're going to go down a one color design anyway, mm. but. Uh, yeah, just going back to the SSD thing, though, I just wanted to get your guys' thoughts on just the whole, like, narrative around this, like, the fanboyism around the whole, oh, you know, like, it's, it does seem, doesn't it, like, PlayStation has gained the sort of social media momentum again, thanks to this. Uh, and the poor Xbox showing, of course. Yeah, I'll be honest, on like, fanboyism and stuff, and it might sound a bit bizarre for someone who's on a gaming podcast and plays games for so many hours per week, even per day. I don't really care. Yeah. I've always kind of, yeah. I don't know, maybe don't when I was it. like 14, 15, 16, I was a bit more interested in in which which console is going to, or which brand is going to win the war and all this. And I, I don't really have time for it. I, I I mean, I look at comment sections to, to garner what people are saying and which directions people are favoring or, or not for that matter. But f- fanboyism in general, I'm not bothered. It, it's not going to influence my decision what I'm going to do in the next generation anyway. No, I'm the same. I think, yeah, uh, yeah I, it's to be expected, isn't it? You know, mm. each console has the fanboys, and it just seems that Sony and PS5 or the PlayStation 4 seem to have more, so whenever they drop something, mm. they get a better reaction. It doesn't help, though, that Xbox seem to shoot themselves in the foot a lot of the times. So, I mean, it's this weird, is though, isn't on it? the yeah. back of inside Xbox, which a yeah. lot of people were disappointed with, so. Yeah, I, I, I mean, that has definitely, like, ramped up, hasn't it? Like, I mean... I don't think you would have been seeing as many comments saying like "lol Xbox" on RIP Xbox if Xbox hadn't have had any show or had a good show. I, no, I, don't, exactly. I don't think uh, we would have been seeing that. But again, it's like it, it kind of annoys me in the sense of from Microsoft's point of view, like what what are you guys doing? Like how have you allowed this to happen? This narrative again, like like look, it's not as anywhere near as bad as the. I know some people are trying to make up like this was as bad as like 2013. They just have to laugh no at that. It's way. like no, it isn't. <laughs> No, absolutely it is not. Like, no, it's completely ridiculous, different. Like, if people think that. But I will say that. I will say it's nowhere near as bad as 2013. But if they do not have a good show in at this July event, this first party event, they are in a bit of trouble, in my opinion. Mm. Because yeah, everyone, be everyone is putting their hopes on that, literally. Like, literally, you have people on the fence saying, literally saying, well, my decision will be made based off that event. <laughs> I mean, I don't think that's even like. A thing to think is laughable. I think a lot of people will be thinking things like, you know, if you're undecided which to go for, and you've thought, oh, well, I've, you know, I like Xbox again. They're doing cool things with Game Pass, you know, they've been consumer friendly. But if they don't show me games, then why would I switch back? So, yeah, I, if I was them, I would very much steer clear of the gimmicky presentation and setup mm-hmm. of the show. And I would try and really just draw it back to this is the console, these are the games, enjoy. Do not green screen weird backgrounds and give too much no, time so to people stupid. who really not like aren't that. relevant, but like there was so much commentary in that inside Xbox show and it was just a bit like, Alright, like these things are interesting, but hit me with all the game stuff and if I want to find more, then I will go and listen to some dev commentaries or some dev interviews. Like th- those things are great in their own right, but stuff like that, I mean I, I really why not? I, I why despair not? to think that's going to be their main show I don't understand why they don't have say that their first party event whatever they're going to have to have a few people talking obviously but why not have it where it's just a complete show reel basically of games like you can have like the intro the first couple of minutes like hi I'm Phil Spencer blah blah you know saying all this usual like and then go and this is what we've got to show and then just literally show like 10 games in a row or however many games you've got to show 10-15 games and have a little you know, indie reel where they can show their indies off, whatever it is. And then at the end of it, and then they go, right, that's the end of the show. And then have like a little after show where they go, right, now we're going to talk to developers. Yeah, exactly. I, I, that'd be the perfect way because then people that want to listen to that extra stuff can, but then people that just came for like seeing the trailers could be like, oh, satisfied with that. You know? Yeah. yeah it just makes think, sense to have something like that to me. I think that would have been good. And another thing they need yeah. to do is focus on gameplay because that's something we're going to yes. jump to now because obviously. <laughs> A big complaint, again, from Inside Xbox, where was the gameplay? Mm. And then Ghost of Tsushima gameplay yep. dropped yesterday, and I think it was like 16 minutes worth of gameplay. Yeah, if I yeah, remember a good rightly. solid 16, 18 minutes. Like and I must admit, this game did look 
pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's funny actually because <laughs> then the whole narrative around uh, PS5 and like uh, that demo and stuff, and then you know this game actually is coming out like so it's coming out on PS4 in like two months, and it's like that. Ga- I don't know if you thought that game to me looked better than like a lot of games that might be coming on PS5 and X Series X, which is very strange. But uh, yeah, I, I liked it. I thought it looked good. I thought it, it, it looked like a quality Sony first party title. Like what we've come to expect from them, to me. I don't know. That's the sense I got from it. Japanese um, Assassin's Creed. Yeah, it did look like that. No, I'm not <laughs> and saying I like, don't mean that like negatively either. Actually, they, they yeah, it good. did look like, good. It I, did look like they'd done a good job did. of... If that's what they were going for, anyway, yeah. the, the transition it, seemed to It work. looked to me like you could swap that game for a Ubisoft press conference where they go, this is an Assassin's, Assassin's Creed Japan or something. And you'd yeah. be like, oh, yeah, yeah, actually, yeah, well, the school looks like Assassin's Creed in Japan. <laughs> Which I don't think is a bad thing anyway, because I think Assassin's Creed is in a bit of a... It's on an upward trajectory, even though, obviously, Valhalla, like the trailers and stuff, haven't been great so far. But I think in the general, Assassin's Creed The less said the better about Valhalla to this point. Yeah, but I think in general, Assassin's Creed is on an upward trajectory. So um, going in that direction with the game, I think you were mentioned, didn't you? maybe mentioned, Luke, that maybe Red Dead 2 as well. Like, it looks a little bit like... Yeah, when, they, when he Dead. was riding the horse, yeah. that, that yeah, reminded me a lot of Red Dead. Yeah, yeah. But. I, yeah. I mean, visually, I expected the game to look great anyway. Sucker Punch uh, make really nice looking games. They made like Infamous, which is notoriously really good looking game on the PS4. <clears throat> so I yeah. wasn't shot by that aspect. It looks just fun to play as well to me. It just looks like one of them fun open world sort of... Open world, but not too open world, if that makes sense. Kind of looked quite contained, didn't it? It, looked like, it wasn't, didn't look like, I don't know, a game like... It didn't even look as big as like Red Dead. It looked like a smaller version, so a more manageable game. So, but yeah, it just, again, it just <laughs> and then you see the comments in RIP Xbox and all this, and it's like they brought it on themselves though because that's all Sony had to do. As soon as they ended, all they had to do was like oh, let's just show this PS. And it's not even a PS5 game; it's a PS4 yeah, game. PS4. <laughs> it makes it even more like jarring for Xbox, I think, at the minute because obviously they've got Last of Us Two coming out as well the month before, so. You know, it's uh, they've got something two we've always complained games. about, though. P- um, PlayStation and Sony have good first-party games yeah, that people do. are interested in, yeah. and if they got them in their they, back pocket, uh, they can do something like this and drop it. See, I think my thing is Sony. They do deserve criticism a lot of the time. They do make some silly mistakes. I mean, they've, they have made errors in the PS5 reveal. There's no doubt about that. You know, the Mark Cerny thing was a stupid way to reveal a console. Uh, they've been silent for too long, in my opinion. They sometimes appear a little bit arrogant and things like that which I think is true, but you, one thing you've got to say about Sony is when they show their first party games off, they show they usually show them off well and they seem to, they know their audience as well, which is one area that I think Xbox is still struggling with. I don't know if you agree, used to agree with that. I don't think they quite know what audience they want to go for. They're trying to go for everyone. You can see that in their presentations yeah. and the way that things yeah. are structured and act like genuine. I know I've just said the word, but the way that they present things to you as an audience, it's a little bit I find it a bit awkward sometimes to watch what Xbox do. Yeah, no, I agree. And I think uh, this is the thing about Sony. Like, they, they know what their audience is. They know that most of their audience wants, you know, mature games that are sort of, you know, a lot of them are adult-rated games, but, you know, that's, that's what they've gone for. But they still have, like, the thing about Sony is they still have other options as well. Like, they have the sort of ratchet and clank, like, kiddie games and stuff like, oh, that's fine. But they focus more on the games that they know their audience wants. And, well, I don't quite think Microsoft know what their audience, or that they don't appear to know what their audience wants. I agree with what you just said. Um, actually, sorry, I can't remember which one of you just said this. Uh, that Xbox is a little bit all over the place. Like They mm. want to appeal to someone who wants a home system that they can use to watch anything on, essentially. Yeah. Then they want people to play games. And now they are t- talking about, obviously, they are going more in the gaming direction. Oh, yeah, yeah, for definitely. too long, it's been a little bit all over the place. Whereas, mm. like, what was PlayStation's old slogan, slogan on the PS4? Was for, the for the players. For, for the players. players. Yeah. yeah. And they just gave you great game after great game after great game. So if you're a gamer, yeah. I guess it just seemed to appeal to you the most. I think they doubled down on that. Uh, whereas Microsoft, I, for too yeah. long, went looking um, for just a bit of everything. And it really hurt them. It's... Uh... I think it's even. I think it's even more obvious. I mean, we can get onto this now about the. They've obviously they're, they're changing their logo, aren't they? They're, well, they're changing their studio logo, PlayStation. 
mm. for next gen. It looks like uh, they're changing it to what's it? Was it what was the name of PlayStation? It's just called PlayStation Studios now. But yeah, it was yeah. just yeah. the the branch yeah. basically to so bring they, everything under under one. Because it was previously oh, Sony already. Interactive Entertainment, and you always yeah. saw that, didn't you? At the start of like a game like Sony Interactive Entertainment. Now you're going to see PlayStation Studios before every first party game. But um, I like it. They said, didn't they, in that thing? Like I think it was Herman Holst who's the uh, I don't know what his actual title is at Sony, but I know he's basically the head honcho of the gaming division um, now. So I think he said, didn't he, uh, that basically this means you, you know to expect a great... Basically, it's basically saying, bigging, and, bigging them up, saying you know to expect a great experience that you that you know we've come to expect from Sony. So that signals to me that with this rebranding that they're going hard again on the hardcore gamer route, which I think makes sense. I don't see why they would change, to be honest. I mean, that's what won in the generation this gen, pretty much, so... Yeah, stick to what's working. Stick to what's working. Yeah. Well, I mean, know, we'll we've see seen that for, not, but... for like, I don't know, decades now. You think about when yeah. the 360 was king. What did they focus on? Games or being an entertainment system? Or games. games. I, I will say, though, to be fair, I think to be fair to Microsoft, they're obviously not, they are focusing on games now. Like, they're far away now from the sort of TV, TV 2013 reveal. I mean, Phil oh, yeah, Spencer like has changed the sh- rewrite the ship. I mean, they know. Like, if anything, they're actually. I, I don't think I've heard anything about entertainment or anything. So, which is yeah. good. We don't want to hear stuff like that. It should be like, a given anyway. You my get the point basic on it is that, options. like you, uh, yeah. Luke was just mentioning there, it's like, oh, well, what works? Well, obviously, we're going to stick yeah. with it. People want games, like you know, yeah. for the players and all that. I know that's been rebranded uh, now, but, but like, if Xbox would have done that from 360 to Xbox One, well. Xbox still would have been the dominant force because people just inevitably want to play games on a games console. It's just my, uh, common my, sense. My only worry, my, my worry is with Microsoft, and I think, well, I'll, I'll be interested to see what you used to think if you agree with me or not. My worry about Microsoft going to this gen is I don't, they're clearly not going on the same path as Sony in terms of this is for the hardcore gamers. Now, they, they're trying to be with the power and stuff like that. Like, we want to retain our hardcore user base, but it does seem to me that they're going more along the lines of, obviously with Game Pass, like, we want to just get as many titles out as possible on Game Pass. Um, and whether that, you know, and, and that does, to me, I get the sense they mean more, right, we're going to maybe make smaller games, more double-A games, like, yeah, you'll get the odd Halo, you'll get the odd Gears, triple-A, you'll get maybe the odd new IP that's triple-A, but it seems like they want to just ramp up how many, ge- that's why they bought these studios, in my opinion, because they want to ramp up how many games they can put in Game Pass in a short amount of time, which does worry me a little bit. That, do, that does slightly concern me. I'm Quantity not, over quality. Quantity over, yeah. And I'm not yeah. saying some of these games will be good. I'm not saying that all these AA games are bad, going to be bad. Like, some will be really good. But I, I just I don't get the sense that a lot of these Xbox ones that are clamouring for Naughty Dog levels and Sucker Punch levels, you know, guerrilla sort of levels of development with their games, I'm not sure. I don't know if we're going to get that next gen. They I hope I'm wrong. They need to be careful because wrong, but... one of the big criticisms with like Netflix, for example, is mm. that there's just so much stuff on there. Just too much on there. Yeah, yeah but there's only like to a lot of people a few things that you want to watch. Things worth watching. Yeah. yeah. Whereas you'd rather have Game Pass, I guess, have less titles but better games. But so... then Microsoft would probably come back at me and say, "Well, look how successful Netflix has been with that model." Oh, yeah. so you know yeah yeah it's like true wrong. but it's also the one thing that's always criticized about it it's like yeah. yeah it's good because i can watch like x y and z shows but look at all the rest that are like oh god i wouldn't even pay attention oh, yeah. to it so i you think get a sense maybe, we might see that next gen though yeah at least to begin with and the reason i say that and one of my biggest like fears for microsoft at the beginning at least of next gen is that we all know if you buy a playstation 5 there will be playstation 5 games yeah and, and that's only on the PS5. bottom line, right? Yeah, only on PS5. And Microsoft will get there with Xbox, but we know it's at least one year away. Probably two because mm. pandemic and setbacks and, and all yeah. that goes with it. So it could even be three. By the time we actually get to the point where Xbox is going to deliver the quality of those, those dev- devs that you've just mentioned that are on PlayStation side, it's, yeah. it could be two or three years into the generation and then it's gone again. Well, that's, like, that, that's what I'm just yeah. really disappointed about. Like, I understand the consumer-friendly approach, what they're doing to keep the family of consoles and family of gamers together and stuff. It's great. It's really good value for money, and all they do with Game Pass is 100% commendable. I can't even say a bad word about it. But the flip side is, you, you take away your big guns for the next gen of being able to say, look, this is only available on Series X. It, it's amazing. You can experience nothing like it. And that, as a, it's like, 
point versus point on like unique selling points. Do you want to stick with what you've got now and make everybody happy and continue to support the family of consoles and blah, blah, blah? Or do you want to get something new and take that risk and say to people, here's the money, you outlay it for the new console, it's 500 pound, but these are the experiences that you pay for. And yeah. I've, I'm like struggling to, just because I'm a hardcore gamer, right? Like really, I, in all essence, I should buy a PlayStation 5. But, well, yeah, I mean, that's... but I might not because of like brand loyalty. Well, yeah, whatever, yeah, yeah. But... You know, yeah, yeah. It's... I mean, obviously, a lot, a lot of things come into it, like where your friends are. I, I get that, like where your friends are, where you've purchased things before, so you don't want to like feel like you've wasted money and stuff like. That. I get that. I get because things obviously going to carry over more and more with each generation. I get that, but I think it, it seems like Microsoft to me are trying to. They, it's like they know their first party output isn't going to be as good as place, and so they've gone, right, let's just focus on getting making the third parties happy. Let's make a machine that's ridiculously powerful and can show off the third party games in a great light, which makes sense. But I would say that if you, you know, if you were going to just, if you're someone that's like, right, I'm only going to play third party games, I'm only going to play games from third parties, then you'd probably choose Xbox most of the time, right? Because it is going to be the most powerful system. It's probably going to run most games maybe slightly better than PS5, but we don't just play third-party games, do we? we? We want the best for third-party games. That's the problem. Most people want games from Sony and Microsoft because they're usually the games that utilize the hardware best. You know, and that's the problem yeah. for Microsoft, I think. Uh, I, if it I was just a third-party the they'd probably win, it, but it's not. It's not, yeah, exactly. Like, it's not yeah. going to feel like a next generation. And no, it's just, that, you know, that's the one that's thing that saddens me. Yeah. Like, I, I play a lot less games in terms of variety than I ever have before in my life. Yeah. I, I main a few games at a time. I don't have tens and tens of games installed at once. It, it, it's very much different for me now. So I can buy the series x and be quite happy with my purchase but also think like oh man i wish i had a bit more like bang for your buck if you like but yeah i just think that in general people will see the series x as like a, a step like a stepping stone somewhere in between this gen and next and the ps5 is just going to be next gen mm. yeah that, that's yeah, how i see it and that's of... what i think yeah that's what i think a lot of people will be saying yeah i think uh, i think you're right about that person it, it, it is probably and this is the problem I have with the whole narrative thing about around Xbox. I think, obviously, that you know the games are going to look great on both consoles so far. It's going to probably look amazing on the Series X, to be fair, certain games. But do you think we're going to get this whole argument, fanboy argument of, yeah, but I could just play this on the, on the Xbox One X and it'd feel the same, whereas on PlayStation you might get, oh, this isn't possible on the PS4. It seems like that it might be a narrative that could come true. I think that's, that, yeah, I mean, that's kind of what I'm going for in that mm. argument. It's like, really... I should probably just keep my my Xbox One X. Well, yeah, as, as many this, people should. Yeah, right. like it, that especially... might be the sensible thing to do if you've got an Xbox One X. Get a P- like if you if you're one of the like if you're all in an Xbox, fine, get the next Xbox, whatever. But if you're someone that's a bit more like ah, I don't really mind changing. Like if you've got an Xbox One X and say you've only got like me, I'm a good example. I've only got a normal PS4 and I've got an Xbox One X. The sensible thing for me would be. Trade in my PS4 or whatever, and buy a PS5 and keep the Xbox One X. Yeah, because they're going like, to be backwards compatible, both of them. So, I, I think about it more in like technical terms now going forward. Like, say for example, Fall comes and I have my Series X and I'm playing a co-op game. Like for example, everyone knows like I play Destiny loads. If I'm playing like a, if I'm doing a raid or something, and there's six of us and I'm the only one with a Series X. I'll load in and I'll have super fast loading times and everything's going to look nice. And then I'll be like, all right. Wait, waiting for my mates to catch up. Come on, guys. Yeah. Load that's in. It. I mean, it's... Load in. And I'm sat there like, great, I, I paid to wait, basically, because mm. my, my stuff loads faster than theirs. I think unless you're in, like, if, you, if you're a co-op gamer and you play with friends all the time and you all have the upgrade, it's going to be great. But if you're in situations like that, and I know I'm probably being a bit specific here, but hey, then people do game in similar ways. That happens to me now. Yeah, like that even happens yeah. now when we play like Warzone, Xbox. for example. So I don't, I don't know if I want to be sat in that position, thinking like, look at my shiny new tech, and it it doesn't mm. actually benefit me all that much. I miss. The I guess game. when you go like competitive, before you jump in there, when you go competitive, it's a bit different because if you get more solid frames, you technically can perform better. But uh, I guess the whole thing is a bit of a rabbit hole. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say I must admit though. Speaking about that, I have contemplated and mentioned in the past that I was thinking about buying an Xbox One X 
and then buying the mm. PS5. Yeah. Because at the moment, it w- I mean, from what we heard anyway early on, that well, there's going to be no next-gen games anyway for at least a year. So I could make no. the half step with the Xbox One X and just go with the PS5 to have my new shiny thing. Well, the Xbox One X is actually pretty cheap at the minute because they're trying to clear the stock. I was just going to say that. Like, <laughs> so you now, could pick now one the best now. time to get one. In the next you could keep it for like two and a half years and probably not miss out on much. So, yeah. you know, that, that's might, the, maybe that's the next into, gen risk. If you're thinking about it. But, because uh, that is another thing that Xbox do have up their sleeve, actually, don't they? We didn't, haven't really mentioned it yet, but they do have this Lockhart console that's rumoured. Well, they're pretty much ninety percent certain. People say, maybe yeah, we know it's a hundred dollar one. Mm, I mean, I hope oh. not because four hundred dollars seems a lot of money for a console. Yeah, four hundred dollars isn't it's, isn't it's a It's the same as the Xbox House. One X. Yeah, that, I thought they had three tiers. So. I thought they were going to uh, have three. Well, they were going to have one that's de- dirt cheap, which would not be very mm. powerful. They were going to have one mid ground, which I thought the Lockhart was mid ground, and then the full. Uh, I think um, one, if you like. no, they're going to leave that as the X. Mm. They're going to have the no, X. It'll be the S, I think, because I think they're trying to get rid of the X, I suppose. I think well, they're actually yeah, trying like, to get rid of it. It'll be the Xbox like, One S Digital or something like that that yeah. they'll try and keep as the real low tier sort of family console that you can just, you know, pick up for 150 quid, something like that, maybe. Yeah. Or, I think or, they'll or, have. Whichever the, way you look at it, yeah. it'll be the, the yeah. point that we're at now rather than yeah. like a new console. And then Lockhart will be the, we expect, the, the streaming box. The, the Game Pass box with, with yeah, no that, disc drive if it, if it goes ahead like that. We don't know if it's going to have a disc drive or not, but that is... I think it makes sense if that one was the one that didn't have a disc drive. You could probably... You could probably make that really cheap, probably 300 to be honest with you. Probably as cheap as 299 I assume. If it's basically the same specs as the Xbox One X, pretty much. Maybe a little bit better, but not much difference. And then have it as a streaming console where maybe Game Pass is bundled in. Things like that, maybe memberships bundled in for three hundred. I think that would be very tempting for a lot of people. Um, but four hundred would be too expensive for that, in my opinion. It, you know, there's no point. I mean, it, and then if you're going to do it for four hundred, there's no point even doing it, in my opinion. Yeah. It has to be cheap. It has that lock car has to be. I think that lock car has to be at least one hundred and fifty pound cheaper than the. Uh, Series X, if not Yeah, more. I completely agree. Otherwise, there's just no there market no point, to it. Yeah, like, like why would you ever buy it? You'd However, just, the you, rumors If you were, were saving, you'd just save a bit more. That the Xbox One at the start was going to be 550 So yeah. if yeah. the Lockhart was 150 cheaper, it'd be 400 Yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I can't see the Xbox being 550 personally. I think the, the most expensive, looking at the way things are going, and like, no, I think the most expensive it could be is 500 Well, at least we'll find out soon. <laughs> well, yeah, actually, yeah, like I whichever mean, way. Yeah, when I, mean, I think about it in that light sense, it do, it does obviously make perfect sense. But I wouldn't pay four hundred pounds for a midway no, upgrade. No, definitely not. You just pay the oh, extra. No, I wouldn't. No, no I wouldn't for the, But it, yeah. it would make make sense if it did come in at five fifty, being the Series mm-hmm. X, and then yeah. But that I, again, I think that would be a huge moment of shooting themselves in the foot. Mm. Yeah. Again. But again, though, definitely, we, um, we're just going off reports. I mean, true. This just shows the. You know, contradictory. There's always reports. That, well, there was reports early on saying 550 upwards of 500, and there's reports saying they might actually be 400. Yeah, you just um, <laughs> we yeah. won't know until we get the price. Really. Roll on it, June it, and July. It will depend on what which one the, what the other one does as mm-hmm. well. Very true. You know, if PlayStation Ring comes, comes out at 500, I could envisage a scenario where Microsoft go. <sighs> do you know what? Do it. Just do it. 400. I, I can I can imagine maybe a scenario like that, but. It will depend if if PlayStation's four hundred, then what do Xbox do then? It's like they'd probably have to come in at four hundred yeah. as well. So it's it's interesting. I think I, I I put it this way: I don't think there'll be a scenario where the Xbox is more expensive than the PlayStation Five. Personally, I just cannot see that being a scenario only because of the narrative. Mm. Because I think they've learned from 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 last from what, how much more expensive was the Xbox One. I do not. It was remember. quite a bit more expensive, it wasn't it? I don't it was, remember on the basis of fifty quid, maybe hundred quid. It was more expensive. We paid a lot. I remember. Yeah. That. We paid more. I remember the PS4 being cheaper, and in general, it was like this is how is this even possible when the PS4 is a bit more powerful? So I, I don't know. I don't know if he's agree. I, I just I cannot envision with what everything Phil Spencer said on price. He's been very coy on the price, but he's hinted at things and said, you know, we're willing to be flexible on price. I cannot envisage a scenario where the PS5 is cheaper now than the Xbox, personally. Mm. But we'll see. 
even if it is, like it has to be close. It, it can't have like a massive think... disparity. Like PlayStation, if PlayStation go first, that. and they're like, "Hey, it's four hundred pound." Xbox aren't going to come in and be like, "Yeah, it's five fifty because <laughs> it's just absolutely next gen like, they'd have suicide." Four hundred. I just don't think. I don't think anything above would would be. I just think it'd look bad. Obviously, I really do. Yeah, well, uh, it's the same the other way around. By the way, just quickly to finish, if Microsoft do look out first and it's four hundred, well, then PlayStation Five ain't going to be five fifty. No, not five fifty. But apparently, the other way around looks more. Well, that's what the point of the report. The other way, PlayStation apparently cannot can't afford the console to be as cheap as Microsoft, just in terms of the way they operate and things like that. PlayStation. Yeah, I, I just mean in Sony, terms of the size of the gap. Like maybe four to five, yes. But when you start adding on like another fifty, no, no, I think no, it, it gets no, it a bit be, too no. drastic. No. It does. And speaking of drastic tears and money, let's uh, <laughs> jump into the last topic <laughs> nice, that we wanted nice. to cover. Um, yeah. yeah, apparently the culling returns. I, I actually didn't know it existed, but it is coming back um, if you're a fan of it. However, it's in a pay-to-play title, the culling origins. So, yeah, this is a weird one. Apparently, it's going to be $6 for the game. And then once you buy that game, you can only play it once a day for free. And if you win the the Battle Royale, oh yeah, I should mention the Battle Royale game if you don't know that. And if you win the Battle Royale, you can have another free game that day. However, if you don't, that's it. You can't play unless you're willing to buy packs. So you could buy <laughs> tokens to play. And if you buy a three pack token, that's a dollar. Ten pack is two ninety nine. Twenty pack is four ninety nine. And if you want an unlimited pass, you can pay $2 for 7 days and $6 for 30 days. Wow, aren't you guys tempted by this? Uh, <laughs> no. I don't even know what to say. Like yeah, When it's... you mentioned this to me, like like you just said, this is the first I've actually heard of it. I didn't know it was a thing before, and I wish it wasn't a thing coming back. The culling should be culled. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, yeah, exactly. it's just around well, Let's be honest, it probably will be with this model, let's be honest. It's not going to last long with this model. I mean, I don't understand <laughs> what they're doing. I actually, it, unless they're trying to make a quick book, I, I literally a quick book off some idiots that are willing to pay it. I say some idiots, I guess. Like, that's, that's probably a bit harsh. I guess people can do what they want at the end of the day. <laughs> if people want to play it, they can play it. But if you you know, if you know, feel like you've got the money to do it, it's a lot. But I, I just, why would you, why would you want to support this model? It's an awful model. Tender. Why would anyone want to support it? Like, I don't want to say this because I feel bad for like the people that develop the game and stuff like that, but the people in charge of actually like marketing the game, they should be ashamed of themselves. Horrendous. To be perfectly honest. Like and to be honest, it's one of them where it's like I wouldn't be, I'm not gonna be sad when it inevitably dies, which it will. Because let's be honest, I think it was the Cullen 2, wasn't it? The sequel to this. Which was free um, to play, like a normal box. Was free to play. <laughs> was apparently dreadful, like really terrible. Apparently it was awful. It. I know what, literally after two or three years, no one was playing it. So why would anyone be interested in this? And certainly why would anyone be interested in this with this model? I just, this sort of model should not be in game. Like, it, it should not be allowed, in my opinion. In game. It should, I don't think it even should be allowed. Because no. it is literally, this isn't just a case of, oh, you know, this isn't even a case of like what, battle, you know what Battlefront did with the, with the loot boxes, purposely mm-hmm. making the game long so that you'd have to, I mean, but that was still optional at the end of the day. You didn't have to buy it. Like, it, you literally pretty much forced to buy these packs if you want to play the game properly. No, dude, you just win every like, game. Uh, yeah, you well, just, keep no, no you just win, bro, don't you? Yeah, no one's doing that. No one's doing that. Like, I, I don't understand but, um, this. If this was a market that didn't exist, and when I say market, I mean Battle Royale, then it's it's still borderline illegal, but okay, it's never been seen before. But hold up. Apex is free. Fortnite yeah. <laughs> is free. Warzone is free. It's like free. the list goes on. What's the point? Who are they hoping no. to compete with? Who are they hoping to know. take players off? Like, I Jesus, genuinely think it's man. an attempt to get a little bit of cash before they probably go under or something. I, I, I don't. I don't. I don't actually understand it. I, it's weird. It's it so makes, weird. It makes no sense. The only argument I've seen. Well, I'm not arguing. I think someone just threw us up as if to say the only thing I can see is that. It's trying to entice players who think, well, I'm such a great gamer that I'm just going to keep winning. And the only the best of the best but... can carry on playing the game. Well, maybe he will, because it'll only be him playing. I'll just give him an win. So. <laughs> but yeah. um, the worst part about this is, I don't know if you saw on the, on the article, there was actually, like, I didn't watch it, but there was actually a developer. They had the cheek to actually put up a developer and actually talk about it as if it was like, mm, oh, this yeah, is our... Yeah. I can't... 
I, I would. I don't think I'd even have the the stones to do to be a developer <laughs> saying that. Like literally, not lying, but being so barefaced to say, yeah. So you have to pay uh, to you know five sessions is like two two dollars or whatever. And it's like you can only play once a day. Ridiculous. A day. <laughs> they definitely drew the short straw in the in the office like sweep there, where yeah, it was like, who's going like to talk it. about this? Like, yeah. oh damn it, it's me. Well, the I mean, do you know what? Is, people think this is a good idea. Someone in that that company thought yeah. this was a good idea. I mean, it wouldn't be uh, shocking yeah. now if we get loads of comments saying like, "You guys are wrong again" and stuff like this. But it's like I just don't know how anyone could defend this. How can any like we got a lot of crap, didn't we, for the Epic Game Store? We got a lot of like we got a lot of stick for that. Mm. And maybe some of it was justified. Maybe we, you know, we, we, none of us have used it and things like that. So maybe some of it was slightly justified. But at the end of the day. This is completely different. This isn't just about a storefront and how little it's got and things like that. This is literally about pretty much thievery. <laughs> like, it's not thievery, but it's, it's, it's as close to thievery as you can get in a video game, in my opinion. Yeah, like, I'm sorry, I don't see this going any other way no, other than it's, it's, people it's, install the game if they want to, they play a game, they lose, and they go, huh, I'll come back tomorrow. Like, it's just, <laughs> what, why would you even... Do you know Even what? if you enjoyed like, it, like I, I, uh, it's not like it's like 10p to play again, is it? This is, this it's is coming to. Is it on Xbox today? Is it coming out today? Yeah, it Xbox? came out today. Yeah. Like, I'm actually tempted to download it and play it out don't. of out of interest. No, not no. because I'm not ever going to play the game properly. I just want to see. You have to for pay my six own quid eyes. for that. Oh yeah, it's not even free, is it? No, well, I won't be doing that then. <laughs> see if it was free and had this model. If it was free and had this model, I'd be like, do you know what? I might even try a game just to see how ridiculous it is. You know what I mean? Just to see. That's how they hook you. Yeah, <laughs> but, the but honestly, the fact that you, no, the fact that you have to even pay six is ridiculous. Like, you just, uh, I, I, I can't even think. Yeah, I can't even think before, but... off the top of my head of a good argument for this kind no. of model. Like this is just it's, utterly it's bizarre. And this is genre as well. In Royale, they're just like you finish. That's it. You win the match. That's it. It's not like can you're I just say a great as well, story with this? Is it? <laughs> can I just say as well? This is an already oversaturated market. What yeah. are they even trying to do here? I, I, I don't Very get different. it. Yeah, be different, well, but yeah, be different good. Don't don't be different like illegal. Like don't do that to people. It <laughs> is like... strange though, because like from an actual like gameplay experience, regardless of which battle royale you prefer, when you don't win or if things go badly in a battle royale, you die on drop. It's like right, how quickly can we get back in? Let's do mm. it again. Let's. Yeah, what but... is this? I don't know. Where's, I don't where's the immersion in that? Go. It's like oh, we wiped guys. Are right, they trying to like? Are they trying up. to like? Capitalizing like the gambling addicts or something like I don't, I don't actually understand like you know what I mean like oh right, come on another quid let's have another get like it's so weird like this model I I I just it makes me worry for the future of games is this the sort of models we're going to be seeing in like ten years from like bigger publishers are we going to start seeing well this is why it needs to be shot down now yeah absolutely because yeah. are we going to start seeing like oh you boot up like whatever game it is and it's like oh well you played two games it's like an extra 50p for the next five games and that's like no. the game's free but you have to pay like oh 50p Mate, an hour or something EA like, would I, definitely I, be I, watching this and oh, if, yeah. if this took yeah. off they'd be like right get that on FIFA Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. play Ultimate Team you get two free games a day and if you yeah, if you don't win them sorry mate you gotta it's, uh, pay two yeah. quid to pay again, play again it costs £20 to open the pack but then you have to pay a pound for each player you want from that pack <laughs> yeah ridiculous yeah, probably <laughs> The sad thing oh. is that you can imagine it. That's I know. That's why we're laughing about it, but we won't be laughing in 10 years' time. The monetization <laughs> possibilities are just endless. I nice. won't be gaming in 10 years' time if. No, if it's like that. No. <laughs> I think I'd just be sticking to I'd, I'd probably just get an old 360 back or something and just play the odd game on that or something. Rather yeah. than yeah. go with, you know, if it was like, what's the point? You may as well go back to the dark, like the good old days or whatever. The dark Thankfully, we, we, the dark <laughs> well, not the dark. No, no. Hopefully, not the dark. Or the good. I should say the good day. It'd be the dark days if this happened. Yeah, I, I was going to say. Like, thankfully, this is a bit of a novelty, and the, yeah. this isn't like yeah. a major player in the industry. So, I mean, thank thank God this isn't happening in like Fortnite, Apex, Warzone, something like that. Because <laughs> then it would be like, oh my God, what's going on? Well, Imagine, if you that, remember. Yeah. When Blackout first came out, people were complaining a little bit that they had to pay for the Battle Royale because yeah. most of it, most Battle Royales are free. I mean, granted, it wasn't that many people complaining, but they're still complaining. So if you yeah. bring up something like this... <laughs> yeah. It was the same with... Uh, do you remember... I mean, oh God, I, I can't remember. I'm surprised even I remember it. Battlefield Five had one, didn't they? Like, yeah. Short-lived. Yeah, I'm sure very, it's still running, but it's... <laughs> and probably is still running, but I don't think many people... I can't imagine many people playing it, but... Um, you know that came that came and went with a 
kind of damp squib as well, didn't it? Because it was like, oh, you have to pay, you have to pay for the game. It's not free. Mm-hmm. So it's free. I, I I do think free is the only model for Battle Royale now. I, I don't think it's even viable any other model. Like yeah, the big players have set set the precedent. Well, there's rumours, isn't there, that Halo's going to have a Battle Royale, which doesn't yeah. shock me. But there's also yeah. rumours that that part of the game is going to be free. Well, I so I'd hope so. But, I mean, I I think it has to be because. You, it just How seems so it set in stone now. It's like Battle mm-hmm. Royale is free. All the money that they make from it, and I, I dread to even call them microtransactions because they're more like major transactions. That yeah. there's mm-hmm. the battle pass, there's packs, there's skins. Whatever way it's marketed within that game, you can spend so much money than you ever would on like a fifty pound release. You, you could spend more than fifty pound in a single like, oh, I want to open that, or I want to open this, I want to get that skin, I want to get that weapon. I, people it's just, would yeah like yeah you can make so much more money than someone would have ever imagined a few years back on a free-to-play oh, yeah. game well like you've touched so. on there has to be free now i think with halo so because we've already seen two big players come to the party and charge initially mm. granted blackout did have a decent amount battlefield 5 seemed to fall off a cliff just came but, and went yeah but then cod has seen warzone and how popular that's been for free granted i know we're in a pandemic so maybe more players would have tried it but more players would have played it anyway just because it was yeah no free. it would have been popular anyway yeah so they ain't absolutely. going back they're not gonna no. go back no no so uh, like i said it's it, there's no there is no viable option now for me i don't even think you can just fly like include it in paid games anymore i think it has to be its own separate thing that's why i say the rumors are they are doing a battle royale with Halo, like on Infinite, but yeah, it's going mean, to have to be separate. That, that's the, the Black rest Ops of the game. Four example. It was included in a paid game because it was like, oh, you actually bought the game, and this is what you get as a yeah. as like an additional within yeah. that. It just doesn't work. Like no yeah. one, no one went for that. No, mm-hmm. I agree. I agree. But yeah, let's hope that the Colin gets cold, as Perk said, and uh, <laughs> yeah, we don't. We're going to get some fans. Like I, I guarantee, we'll get some Colin fans. Like in our chat. In our comments, if you're so. a culling fan and you agree with this, then <laughs> yeah. I don't know what's wrong with you. You should be complaining and getting these guys to change. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Um, but yeah, that does bring an end to the show. So thanks for listening as always. And if you are listening to us on YouTube, please like, subscribe and comment with your thoughts below. And if you're listening to us on any audio platforms, please leave us a nice review and also pass on the pod. You can follow the um, podcast on social media on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram at ChetReachPod. Links are in the description below. You can also follow the guys on social media. Where can people find you, Sud? So it's just at David Tenspot on Twitter. Perks? At JG Perks. And you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Leld, L-E-L, 3Ds, at a 9 a.m. for Instagram. Anyway, thanks for joining me as ever, guys. Have a good week, and we'll be back next week to discuss some more gaming news. Bye, guys. Bye, guys. Bye-bye.